The cyber battlefield has changed. Today's attackers are evolving faster than our defenses can keep up. We're learning more about an alarming rise in cyber attacks. Cybersecurity experts are sounding the alarm about this vulnerability. Cybersecurity specialists are scrambling to investigate what could be the largest global ransomware attack in history. As new technology emerges, threat actors are watching, observing, and learning how to circumvent our defensive tools. Hundreds of millions of devices are at risk from a newly revealed software flaw. This is a persistent condition. This is not something we are going to fix. It's a game of cat and mouse that attackers are poised to win. Any doofus can be a cyber criminal now. It's pretty much plug and play, and so the threshold to get into this industry, uh, the bar has been, been lowered to a degree where it's a open to anybody. The world's top ransomware gangs have joined together to create a hacking cartel of sorts. These aren't just random thugs. These are organized, sophisticated uh, cyber criminal operations. These organizations, these are like businesses, basically. It's obviously very lucrative. They're able to keep these people on staff. I don't think they have any motivation to quit anytime soon. For so long, the cybersecurity industry has only been playing defense, reacting, responding. New threats have led to new preventive products, leading to more moves and counter moves. As defenses become more sophisticated, attacks have to become more sophisticated, and that wheel will never stop turning. We're getting better but the attackers are also getting better. And so you have to kind of figure that out. You have to start thinking about this more like a chess game and try to see like a few more moves ahead instead of just trying to get right ahead of them. This will never end. Preventative security controls will only be able to barely keep up with what's going on in the adversary landscape. They're always gonna pivot. They're always gonna come up with something new. We're battling human ingenuity. Today's threat actors are found wherever there's technology. That means they're everywhere. It also means that no technology is 100% secure. Adversaries are working night and day to evade our security defenses. Sometimes the adversary can slide under the radar. Sometimes they can go undetected or just be a little bit stealthy and the security mechanisms just didn't fire. No matter how much preventative you put into your security stack, there's always going to be a zero day or there's always going to be a misconfiguration. We've poured a lot into prevention efforts. We poured a lot into trying to stop the threat before it happens, but we've come to know, hey, that doesn't really work out all that much. Hackers are finding new ways to slither and sneak into IT environments. They're flying under the radar. They're exploiting our software's blind spots. They're hiding in plain sight, waiting to strike. But what if there was a way to tip the scales in our favor? What if we could anticipate the unknown? What if we could hunt for cyber threats? Cyber threats have been around for decades, but they have run rampant in recent years. Rather than sitting back and waiting for threats to strike, threat hunting emerged as a new way to take back control. Instead of only playing defense, we realized we could start playing a little offense. Most defense in the cyber world focuses on the after impact, threat hunting flips that on its head. Threat hunting takes an idea and says, where do I believe that someone will try to attack my environment? And they try to find that as it happens in progress. Threat hunting is proactive. It goes on the offense. It doesn't wait for alerts or red flags. Instead, threat hunting seeks out cyber threats. Threat hunting really began around the same time and kind of in parallel to SIM technologies being brought to market. And so SIM stands for Security Information Event Management. These systems allowed us to aggregate billions of events in a centralized location. So naturally, once we started aggregating those billions of events, network administrators, IT administrators started to ask questions of their data. Threat hunting is a much more nebulous, much more vague sort of beginning. It begins with a hypothesis about something that might be in the environment, some kind of activity, some sort of potential vulnerability, whatever it might be, but you don't have the evidence when you start a threat hunt. That's what the hunt is all about. 
As cyber attacks continue to rise, we've turned to detection technology as the solution. We rely on automation and alerts to sound the alarm and warn us of danger. But in today's landscape, that can only get you so far. A lot of security professionals and organizations and, and businesses honestly have a certain amount of crutch where you put your feet up on the dashboard and you wait and you just acknowledge, hey, uh, if the adversary comes and bangs on our door, we'll know because we'll be able to hear them banging on the door, right? They'll be alerted and notified. Alerts are coming in all the time. If you haven't tuned your tools, you may be getting hundreds of alerts a day, thousands of alerts a day. And that might seem like you're doing the work of defense. But if you're not responding to those alerts and not making sure that they're real or not, you really don't know what's going on in your environment. Your automation is going to say alert, 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 but it's alerting on a low risk asset that you know, frankly, maybe nobody cares about. So then when it does alert something happening on a critical asset, it's missed. That story, right, we all know has happened time and time again in the news. And that's what happens with automation when it becomes too relied upon. With cyber threats increasing in quantity and quality, IT teams simply can't keep up with the alert volume. Most IT responders do suffer from a bit of alert fatigue. And whether that's someone's internal IT department, whether it's a service provider, uh, or whether it's just a vendor that offers those types of services as a whole, alert fatigue is, is just a direct result of trying to purely use technology to solve a problem. Automation is great to get us to a baseline but there is a bottleneck in the human element, right? Our security team can only respond to so many incidents or so many alerts in a defined amount of time, and that creates a weakness in our security posture. The way that threat hunting can help with alert fatigue is it allows skilled humans behind the screens to filter out a lot of that noise before they deliver it to the people that may actually be responding to uh, the types of incidents that, that generates. Cybersecurity requires a constant state of vigilance. We can't rely on tools and dashboards alone. We can't automate away cyber threats. We need skilled humans, defenders, who are watching, monitoring, and observing. We need threat hunting. Threat hunting became a way of activating analysts and other security staff to become proactive in their search for malicious activity. Threat hunting is taking an idea and saying, what threat actor is going to attack me? Where do I believe that they will attack me? And what are they going to look like in my environment? Going beyond the dashboard are words that I really like to use when you aren't just waiting for alerts or for alarm bells to go off from your SOC or your SIEM solution, and you're out there looking for potential threats, malware, hey, nefarious activity, indicators of compromise. We can't wait for that. We have to be proactive in looking and hunting for the adversary behaviors, the adversary indicators that may or may not be in play within that network. Our adversary is in software. They're not just a piece of code, they're a human. Cybersecurity is a battle of wits, and we need humans in the hunt. Time and time again in this industry, we've proven that automation only gets us so far, and at the end of the day, it's always humans that are picking up the pieces and making sense. They're building that context and driving it to the next stage. Ultimately, the device, the computer, the automated program might just miss the mark. Uh, sometimes it sleeps on the job and, hey, human beings, real people like you and I, we have context. There is a human with this awesome human brain that we get to deploy when we threat hunt. And so things like automated threat detection in a seam, like alerts or heuristic uh, signatures, they have their place and they should be deployed in your environment. But at the end of the day, there is no automation on earth that can replace that human with the human eyes and the human brain taking a look at their environment and saying, I don't think that looks right. I'm going to follow this through. I'm going to look at the trail of evidence of threat activity in my environment, and I'm going to see where it leads and where it came from. There's a cloud of uncertainty around where today's threats lurk. Threat hunting embodies that uncertainty. It explores the unknown. It tries to predict the unpredictable. Threat hunting was born out of the necessity to go on the offense. It aims to reduce our risk and exposure to cyber attacks while improving our ability to catch and respond to new threats. 
there's kind of the motto that you never want to miss something twice, right? If, if this attacker is doing this and we missed it one time, we better not miss it again. If you have the understanding that, hey, the adversary is already here, they're already in your networks, that's why you are up at arms, looking around, chasing and hunting to go seek out that adversary. It's one thing to assume an adversary is in your environment, but threat hunters know that truly understanding that adversary is the key to beating them. No matter how good our automated alerts are, no matter how good our automated detections are, our adversary is human. And we as humans involved in security have to be thinking about them and what they're doing and how they're going to behave. You sort of play a little bit of that adversary. You, you act like the adversary, you put your hacker hat on and you start to think, what would this adversary do in this situation? How would I start pivoting through? How would I start moving through this network or this system? What are they gonna do for initial access? How are they going to move laterally throughout a network? What do they do to install persistence or escalate privileges? I am a better defender because I know how attacks work. If I didn't understand how attacks were performed from a first person perspective in my environment, I would have no idea really how to defend it. There's a benefit to stepping inside the attacker's mindset. When you know their typical tactics, techniques, and procedures, you know how they can be used against you. But how far into the attacker's mindset should you go? The gray area between hacker hunter uh, is uh, not as gray as it used to be. There are hackers out there that want nothing more than to cause damage and wreak havoc. There are hackers out there that are protecting your infrastructure. I got to admit, a threat hunter is very well a hacker on that good connotation. They just want to know what happened, where, how, and they want to be able to uncover the big picture. It's all about the intention behind the hacker. What does that hacker want to do? When you're threat hunting, you might have the potential to dig into information or sensitive files or data, or personal information that just isn't going to be privy to your investigation, the incident that you're analyzing. Are you performing this activity because you're curious? Are you performing this activity because you want to make something more secure? Are you causing any damage to anything outside of your immediate sphere of influence that might actually impact human lives? What do these people go do with all these skill sets if they can't make an honest wage? Maybe some of them do some nefarious things.